We'll join together this morning in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We begin our chapel service today remembering the words that were spoken over us at our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll continue with our hymn. Our reading today comes from Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he has spoken my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So, Whose team are you on? Has anyone ever asked you a question like that before? The idea of being 
on a team has probably been a part of your life as far back as you can remember. I would guess that the first team you might have considered that you were a part of would be your family. I don't think my kids ever uttered the phrase, Team Shanick, but there's no doubt in my mind that they grouped together and looked out for each other when they were little. I remember them often talking about doing this when they rode the bus in grade school. For others of you, I bet your earliest memories of team were that you identified strongly with a professional or college athletic team. Do you have memories of cheering on or wearing the jerseys of the Packers, Brewers, Bucks, Admirals, or Badgers when you were little? If you don't cheer on Wisconsin teams, then substitute in your favorite sports ball team. My brother lives in College Station, Texas, which is the home of Texas A&M University. No one in his family has ever attended the school, and yet his three daughters, my nieces, have been diehard Texas A&M Aggie fans since they were born. Fast forward a few years to grade school. At recess or during PE, I'm sure that you were on different teams for all the various games that were played. Maybe you remember the anxiety of waiting to be picked for a team. Or if you were an athletic superstar, you remember the pride of always being picked first. I'll ask all of you Morningstar grads to think back to the last day of the school year when you got split into teams for all those end of the year activities. I bet some of you even remember what color team you were on. Even though you got split up into different teams for recess and PE, your whole grade school came together as one when it came time to compete against other schools in basketball, volleyball, cross country, math, forensics, or the spelling bee. You were the Good Shepherd Rams, and there was no way that you were going to let those dirty, rotten David Star Thunderbolts beat you at anything. You might also have experienced playing on a club team where a group of kids around your age from the local community was put together to compete against other club teams in anything from youth soccer here in the parks of Jackson to teams that have traveled to other states to compete in tournaments. When you play on those teams, you've got the backs of your teammates and you are in it to win against any opponent you face. As students at KML, I'd like you to think back to the homecoming pep rally. The music was pounding, the cheerleaders were screaming, and you shouted the numerals of your class at the top of your lungs because you were part of that team that didn't want any other class to shout louder than you. But at the end of the day, we all come together as the Chargers. I can almost guarantee that you will never forget the name of your high school mascot. Think about your parents now. Even they have teams. Maybe your mom or dad is completely dedicated to a particular sports team, wearing jerseys, or even creating a shrine in the basement or garage. How many of your parents have a sticker on their car that lets everybody know they support a team, a band, a brand, a TV series, book series, movie series? You get the picture. Most of your parents also work at jobs where they are part of a team or they consider the company that they work to be their team. So why do we have all these teams? I imagine that a psychologist might delve into the balance between our need to belong and our need to compete. But what I want you to focus on is the big picture that when you are on a team or in a group, there is a major focus on us versus them. I want you to realize that you've all experienced this phenomenon and that sometimes it can be very, very strong. This us versus them idea is important in understanding our reading for today. The words we read in Isaiah were written to the Old Testament Israelites. They were the people that God had set aside, starting with Abraham, to be the people from whom eventually Jesus would be born. God had given them many rules and laws that would keep them separate from the people around them. And they had a very strong us versus them mindset. This theme flows throughout the Old Testament as the people continued to look for their Messiah, the promised Savior that many of them thought would save their nation and restore the glory days of David and Solomon. 
You see this mindset still at work hundreds of years after Isaiah when the Jews of Jesus' day were expecting a Messiah who would free them from the oppression of the Romans. Sprinkled throughout the Old Testament, however, are many reminders, like we have in our reading, that God's plan of salvation was that while the Savior would come from the descendants of Abraham and David, that Savior would be the Savior for all people in the entire world, regardless of their heritage. As New Testament Christians, with very little Jewish ancestry in our midst, we often don't appreciate what a big deal it was to the Israelites that Isaiah said that the Messiah would be for the Gentiles too. That idea went against their us versus them worldview, where the them was the Gentiles. So how does this impact us today? I think that in many ways, we Christians have fallen into the same trap as the Israelites. We have developed the same us versus them attitude, where we think of Jesus as the Savior just for Christians. I'd like to challenge you to shift your focus to the scale on which God views the world. The battle that God is engaged in is not against people. It's against sin and the devil. God's greatest desire is to save people. And not just to save one kind of people, but to save all people. In order to do that, he sacrificed his son for every one of all time. We can still divide into two teams. Believers who are on God's team and unbelievers who are not. But the contest between these two groups is not like basketball or volleyball or football where you try to score the most points. It's a lot more like tag, where the point of the game is to get as many people on your team as possible. When we hear Isaiah's reminder that Jesus is the Savior for the whole world, I pray that will remind us that our job is to share the good news about our Savior to the ends of the earth, because Jesus died and was raised for everyone, everywhere. We'll continue with our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to be the Savior of all people, so that we could be rescued from the guilt of our sins. We pray for the courage and the words to speak as we look for opportunities to share the amazing message of salvation to our friends, our families, and the entire world. May God bless you with a spirit that sees and seizes opportunities to share the good news of Jesus, the Savior of the world. You guys would like to see some announcements, I suppose. After you've read those, you are dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>